Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I've got about 10 cities in the uh, last three days since I made my last video that are showing high readings. Um, some of them are even higher uh, than any of the other times since June. I'm going to go through the list real quick, and I'm not going to do the overlay with the jet stream. I checked every one of the cities though, and the jet stream was over the top of each one of these on the days that the numbers were high. I'll put links at the bottom if you want to look for yourself. First city is Phoenix, Arizona. On November the 28th to 29th, it was a little bit over 500 counts per minute. 300 is the level that the EPA recommends. Um, firefighters don radioactive uh, hazmat suits. So it was a little over 500, and that is the second highest reading it's had since June. Next city. Bakersfield, California, and what's interesting is this graph has not been reading at all, and it either just got um, reactivated or brought back online, or the baseline has been set so low that these spikes are just showing up on it now, and we have other graphs um, that I'm going to show to you where that's happening, and that's not accurate. Um, these graphs should not be calibrated this way. On November the 28th in Bakersfield, California, the counts per minute were uh, approximately 875. Yuma, Arizona, and we're kind of used to seeing this around Yuma, um, but it's been spiking quite a bit lately. And on November the 28th, uh, readings came in at about 460 counts per minute. Idaho Falls, Idaho, and, and this isn't particularly high for this area. This is where um, the huge research facility is. Uh, they had a recent plutonium explosion in a lab that sent 17 people to the hospital with contamination. Um, I feel really bad for those people. There hasn't been anything too unusual. I don't remember the exact date that this explosion occurred. Um, this spike is fairly high. On November the 28th or 29th, the readings were coming in around 400 counts per minute. Aurora, Illinois, we don't have a beta graph data for the city, but I did happen to notice a fairly high spike on the gamma count. It's been uh, the highest that it's been since June. And the same thing showed up on the graph for Chicago. Worcester, Massachusetts, highest reading, coming in right at 300 on November the 27th. Wilmington, I wanted to put in here because they also had a problem at Brunswick 2 recently. And I'm not seeing anything unusual in the graph that would indicate that there were any releases affecting that area. So that's good. Reno, and this is a graph that I'm questioning um, the calibration, the, the baseline should not be going below zero. There's no way that you can have a negative beta count. So it looks like this entire graph needs to be moved up, possibly um, two to three hundred units in my estimation. Readings were coming in just right under 400 on the 29th, 450 on the 27th, and, well, if this graph was moved up, this is about where the spike would probably be. But again, that's just my estimation. Madison, Wisconsin surprised me a little, and I've had a few people that have emailed me recently asking about Wisconsin RADs. Um, they haven't been too bad this whole time, but this is the highest 
that I've seen in this area. Uh, 400, I'm sorry, 350 counts per minute on November the 27th, and the Milwaukee, Wisconsin uh, graph is reading the same, also high for that date. All right. This is what the jet stream was doing on those days. This is the 27th of November. And as you can see, pretty much every one of those areas was hit. It's kind of an unusual split here. And we can go over to the forecast and tell you what to expect for the next couple of days. This is where the jet stream is right now. So as you can see, it's pretty much going to hit everywhere. And this is the uh, NOAA five-day precipitation forecast. Right now on IntelliCast, this is what we have. And I want to bring this up, too, because uh, we're starting to see some snow. I had uh, about an inch of snow here overnight. And I have been um, trying to get information about the difference in the, the radiation potential um, between different types of precipitation. And what I found is, um, from watching uh, some videos from Lauren Murray, is that the way fallout occurs in rainfall, the particles that are in the air, because of the electrical charge that they have, um, they attract water vapor, and when they attract enough water vapor, um, that's when the particle is wet and falls to the ground. It's heavy enough then to fall to the ground. However, in snow, because snowflakes have so many sharp, jagged edges, when snow flies through the air, um, these edges um, cause drag and also give it more of an electrical charge. So instead of forming around radioactive particles, it attracts them like a magnet. So there's a much greater potential for fallout to occur in snow than there is in rain. And with the levels that we've been seeing in rain, I'm very concerned about what we're going to be exposed to this winter. Um, I will keep you up to date and uh, pass along any more information that I have on these weather issues. Please stay safe. Um, comment below anything unusual that you've noticed in recent rainfalls in your areas in, in terms of how you're feeling and the people in your family are feeling. Uh, you know, share that with us and also try to talk to your neighbors and your coworkers and your family about this too so that they start paying attention to this. Stay safe, everyone.